in this lecture we are going to talk about DQ that is double ended Q right. We will discuss what is DQ, how this is different from the Q or you can say uh, linear Q and circular Q fine. As well as we will see some types you can say two types of this DQ and some applications of DQ right and how we can implement this Q in memory right. See I have already discussed about Q and circular Qs fine with their operations plus implementation. I will provide you the link of that playlist in the side button as well as in the description box you can check out there. We are left with uh, DQ that is double ended Q and priority Qs right. So, in this video we will discuss about double ended Qs sometimes it is also known as DEC fine. Now see I guess you remember what is a Q it is a list where you can say insertion would be from one end and deletion would be from another end right. See this is how we are going to represent a Q. So, insertion would be from one end and that end is known as rear end of the Q and deletion would be from another end that is known as known as front of the Q. You can take here front here rear but you, you should follow the rules. If you take here rear end this rear end you consider this end is the rear end then insertion would be from here and deletion would be from here that is the restriction in the Q. Now, as the name suggests double ended Q in this case how this is different from this Q insertion and deletion are allowed from both the ends right to make it a you can say a DQ what you need to do from here see this is what deletion so here you can insert from here you can insert and delete. From here also you can insert and delete right. So, insertion and deletion are allowed from both the ends it is known as double ended Q right. So, if you define this you can say it is a linear list in which insertion and de deletion or you can say NQ and DQ operations are allowed from both the ends right. So, it is you can say a generalized version of Q. So, here also you can consider this as front this as rear as you wish or this as front this as rear because insertion and deletion are allowed from both the ends right. So, now you can also write down some properties of this Q see it is having the properties of both stack and Q see stack is going to follow LIFO property and Q is going to follow FIFO property this we know already we have already discussed. So, see it supports the properties of both stack and Q right. So, it can be used as both stack and Q sometimes you can use that it as a stack and Q. If you are using it as a stack then what you need to take care in, in this case last in first out property it should follow what last in first out property to make it as a stack right. It means something like this here from here only I can insert and from here only you can delete right this is one end of the queue implement insertion and deletion from this end only you will not touch this end it means this is what stack now horizontally if you will represent it something like this right this is the one end from where you can insert and from here also you can delete and to use it as a queue what you need to take care in the queue we know that from insertion can be from one end you can say from this end deletion would be from this end. So, you can implement this thing using this DQ also right insertion you can put some restriction here and you can use it as a Q because it is going to follow with property of both stack and Q fine. Now, types of DQ see basically two types of DQ are there one is input restricted and second one is output restricted right. In input restricted DQ what is the case see as the name suggests input restricted means you are going to put some restrictions on input on you can say insertion or you can say on NQ operation right. So, here in this case in this DQ insertion can be allowed only from one end deletion is allowed from both the ends right. So, how you are going to represent this Q that input restricted Q see if suppose I am taking this as a Q fine. So, this is front this is rear 
So, insertion can be from one end only either from this or this as you wish from where you are going to from which end you want the insertion. Suppose, I want insertion from here right insertion can be from this end only you can delete from here you can delete from here right we are going to put in restriction only on the input operation this is what input restricted queue. Now, next is output restricted queue it means as the name suggests we are going to put restrictions on output or you can say the delete operation it means deletion can be possible from one end insertion is possible from both the ends right. So, suppose this is a queue this is front this is rear and here also you can take either end at which you can perform deletion, but you should take care of this thing that deletion can be from that end only right. Suppose I am taking deletion from this end. So, you cannot delete from this end you can insert from this end you can insert from this end right. So, this is what output restricted DQ this is input restricted DQ these are two types of uh, DQ you can say. Now, next is what type of operations you can perform on a DQ see basically these four types of operations you can perform you can insert at front delete from front insert at rear delete from rear right. How we are going to implement these operation that thing we will discuss in the next video right. Now, other than these operations what you can do you can perform what see in that uh, queue what operation we can perform other than insertion and deletion or you can say other than in queue and dq peak means we are going to get the front element. So, here you can say you can get the front element as well as the rear element. So, uh, you can say get front get rear fine or you can say front and rear means you want to check out which values are the front of the queue which values are the rear of the queue and other than these two operations are also there that is is full and is empty right. This operation is going to return true if the dq is full otherwise false and is empty means this is going to return true if the dq is empty otherwise it is going to return false. How we will implement these operations on a dq that thing we will discuss in the next video with proper code. So, now next thing is memory representation of this dq or you can say how we are going to implement this dq how we are which data structure you are going to use to implement this dq. So, the answer is either you can use a circular array or you can use a uh, doubly linked list right. How we will implement this using circular array that thing we will discuss in the next video. What is circular array? See we have already discussed the circular queue implementation in that case we have discussed that uh, we can implement that circular queue using a circular arrays right. So, now in that case what is the case here suppose we have front and rear. So, now the situation is something like this here I have 3, 4 and 2 and this is free now. So, front is pointing to here and rear is pointing to here. Now, I want to perform this insert at rear insert at rear here. But now see suppose array size is 4 only right. So, now you cannot do rear plus plus means here you cannot insert, but it should not return that q is full why. So, because we are using circular array concept something like this logically you can represent it something like this this is a circular array 0 1 2 and 3 after this 3 index we will move to the 0th index means something like this and this space is free. So, you can insert here this is what a circular array concept. So, you can implement this dq using circular array or you can implement it using uh, linked list also doubly linked list also. And here in this case all the operations that is insertion and deletion should take what order of one time complexity right. Now, we will see some applications of dq. See as we have discussed it has the property of both stack and queue right. So, we can use it as stack and queue both fine. So, the applications of stack and queue would be obviously the application of this dq. So, first application is you can say uh, it can be used to perform redo and undo operations fine. Second thing you can say it dq can also be used as a palindrome checker palindrome means if you uh, read a string from the front 
and if you read from the end then it would be same from both the ends fine suppose you can take an example of uh, uh, this thing if you read it from here then radar and if you read it from the end then also it would be radar so it can also be used as a palindrome checker now the very important application is what it is used in what multi processor scheduling see what is that thing it means multi processor means you can say here multiple processors are there suppose we are taking two processors and each processor is assigned some job and every or you can say a process and every process is having multiple threads right so each processor is containing its queue or you can say a dq this is also maintaining its dq this is also maintaining its dq see these dqs are used to maintain those threads which are ready to execute now see here when a process creates a new process suppose a process is executing a process this process is executing a process so a process can you can say produce its child process so that process would be inserted at the front of this dq but suppose this processor has executed its all the threads right now this processor this processor will steal a thread from this processor or you can say the process of this processor but this will take a thread from the rear right from rear of this dq and after stealing this thread it will execute the thread on this processor means on its own and it will add this thread to its front and this processor will take you can say uh, threads from its front so here you can say this we can delete from the rear and we can delete from the front we can insert from uh, both the ends also and delete from both the ends so here to to implement this thing in this multi processor scheduling uh, algorithm dq is going to be used right so this complete process is known as what it is known as known as a streel algorithm for job scheduling see this is just a brief overview of uh, what a uh, a streel algorithm is there if you want me to make a video on this thing you can write down me in the comment box right see there can be many more applications of this dq other than these three that we have discussed here fine but i guess uh, this is fine for the introduction of dq in next video we will discuss how to implement uh, double ended queue using circular arrays right so else in the next video till then bye bye take care